is we're going to work on being the cookie. We're going to work on having fun, okay? Because why do you show dogs? Because it's fun, right? And all I want you to do is have fun with your dog with no eye contact, okay? And sunglasses don't count. <laughs> if your head is in that direction, they still think you're looking at them right there. So no eye contact and have fun with your dog. That's all I care about. Good, good, good. Wow, now that dog's having fun. <laughs> Very nice. And that leash was, leash was, that's hard to say. Leash was loose. <laughs> now don't knock your dog out. Good job. Very nice. Okay, let me have my first dog stacked on this pink target here. And make it fun. How are you going to make that fun? Good. Now, are your eyes looking at her eyes? <laughs> okay, so have fun with her, but don't touch her. Don't have no physical contact, no eye contact or nothing, but see if you can make her just really get that tail going. There it is. Good. Tail's kind of going. She's telling on you. Okay, so if that's not working, you got to try something different. What can you do to really get that tail going and don't touch her and don't have any eye contact? <laughs> See, this exercise is a little more difficult. So that's something that you need to think about tonight. What do I need to do to get some spark out of this dog? I can't look at it and I can't touch it. Let me, can I borrow her for a second? Absolutely. Okay, you guys should be paying attention to this because you're going to be here too. What's her name? River? River. River. Oh, there it is. Go get it. Get it, get it, get it. Yes. Look at that tail, guys. There you go. <laughs> she says yeah so that's your gauge right there if that thing's going tick talk <laughs> you're not the cookie so this exercise it's not about being perfect in any way but you need to be what I call disgustingly stupid silly whatever you want to call it and get that gauge going because look at her focus there this, you have to have it here, and you have to have it here. You can't fake this. And your gauge is that tail, and if that tail is not just going crazy, then it's not happening yet. Okay, so how much exciting energy did you have walking to the ramp? Zero. <laughs> yeah, now we're talking. Woohoo! Okay, so right when you got to the ramp, you lifted your hand up like this and you lost the connection. Okay. And so when you're getting to an object where you're, it's really important that the dog tracks on that, you want to put that hand down so you can lead them onto that. Put that hand down. There it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. See the difference there, guys? Yay! That was awesome! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> she says, I need a bigger treat if you're going to have me do this. <laughs> Yay! That was awesome! Okay, so that's how you make stuff happen right there. Okay. Good. Now, another thing too, don't take the treat and do this stuff with it. Oh, okay. Because when you do this, then their head's going like that, they'll get dizzy and they'll fall off. Oh, well, we don't want that. <laughs> that this exercise here is going to solve many of your problems. Because once you learn how to make it fun at all these stages, the rest of it's going to be a piece of cake. Because it's also going to help you with your connection with these dogs, too. Here you go. I always have treats. <laughs> there we go. Watch your eyes. Good, good, good. Look at that meter going, boy. 
Woohoo! That's awesome! Woohoo! Okay, front paws. And yay! Okay, purple. Okay, get her to go down the center. Good, 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 good. There it is. Okay, purple, 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 purple. Yay! Woohoo! <laughs> so, what do we think about this exercise? It's hard. It really is hard. But yeah, it is hard to have fun. But if you guys learn how to become connected, too many people are worried about perfect stacks. They're worried about perfect gates. They're worried about all that stuff will come. That stuff's easy. This is the hard part right here. If you can get that meter going and you're having fun with that dog, the rest of my job is going to be a piece of cake because that stuff there is so easy to teach you. This stuff here, I can show you, I can give you advice, but it has to come from here and here in you. I can't change that. That has to come from you guys right there. Yay, that's awesome. That was perfect. Good job. Okay, purple. Okay, you're serious. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> there it is. Oh, it. Look at I that. Yeah, see, that's it. it. You got it. <laughs> Make it look like you got to go pee really bad. <laughs> Woo. Yahoo! There's a Yahoo! <laughs> there it is. Yay. Okay. Back to the purple. Yep. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. I'm not looking at it. I know. <laughs> yeah, come on. Get a little purple. No. Nope. He's like, yay. Now, <laughs> this is something you want to have. And, you're, and you don't want to be thinking, oh, my gosh, I'm not going to be able to get him to show without doing this in the ring. It will happen. But right now, this is fun. We got to get him, got to get that attitude going. Yes. He wants more. I know. Yeah. And this is the attitude he had. Yay! I know. I know. <laughs> Yay! Oh! Oh! <laughs> okay, get out of my ring. I got to get that piece of So, what <laughs> we're going to do is we're going to get a little bit of treat. A little bit of sheep. A little bit of sheep. Here it goes. It's almost there. And ta da! Yay! Okay, by teasing her, it kept her from dropping that head down. So we're just having a good time. Okay. I got it now. Okay. Woohoo! 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 Woo okay, here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, right there, right there, right there, right there. Oh, that's so good. Yay. See the difference there? <laughs> How important is this exercise? Yes. And most people think this is just a ridiculous thing. But you have to really take the time to figure out how can I be the cookie? You know, you've got a bitchin' season. You got a dog fight going on over here. You got somebody who's dropping crates. Anything can happen in that ring and you have to be able to recover. At home, every once in a while when your dog is not paying attention, what I normally do will make a sound and I'll go and the dog will come running in. I get it pumped up, I get it excited, I give it a treat, and I turn around and ignore the dog. Why would I turn around and ignore the dog? Mm -mm. So there's time for this and time for that? Mm -mm. Leave it wanting more. Exactly. Exactly. And so if I'm in a situation in the ring and all of a sudden there's a bitch in season or a dog fight or something going on, all I have to do is go and that dog knows it's going to come to me and get a treat. 
it's not going to know how long that's going to last, so it's really going to focus. It's like, oh, and the more you can get that attention and that playfulness right there, the more that dog is going to just be glued in on you. You got to have fun yourself playing with that dog. And that's why you're going to take your dog and you're going to put alarm clocks on. You're going to put your phone on different ringers and stuff. And you're going to take timers and you're going to create these distractions. And you're going to let this dog have fun during those situations where they're focused on you. We were way too serious when we walk into these rings and we think that that is just a waste of time when it's not. Tonight, when you guys go to your tents, motorhomes, cabins, whatever, you're gonna read that general appearance of that standard and that's gonna tell you what you need to do. And if you have to be over the top silly, then be over the top silly. Most people that leave a workshop are not going to practice what we just did right here. Most people, when they leave this workshop, they're going to practice the stacking. They're going to practice the gating. They're going to practice all this stuff when that stuff is totally irrelevant. So let's say you, you focus on what you just learned right here and you practice that and you stop focusing on winning. You stop focusing on perfection. Let that happen naturally because these dogs already know how to do that your chances of winning are you're just going to be walking out of best in show after best in show after best in show. I want to tighten up a little bit of some of the techniques that are going to help you be more fluid when you get ready for that confirmation stuff. That confirmation stuff is not there if that dog is not wagging its tail 100%. The second this dog crosses this threshold right here, that dog needs to look perfect that gate needs to be perfect. Now, I teach my students to back up so the dog is perfectly straight. Once the dog is straight, get out of the way. You're just step away from your dog and now you can gate forward like this. But you're not facing, you should be square to me. Okay, okay? and then back up, have your hand go towards the cone. Now stop, okay. Look at me for a second. When she turned, she went like this. So whose butt's in front of the judge now? Her. Yours. Okay. okay. So let, if you're the judge, I'm backing away and I'm stepping away from my hand. From entering the ring, the judge is going to look at everybody. So I see a lot of people that go into a hand stack at this point. So why not show them something different? Maybe a really good free stack where you're six feet away. You have to stand out. You have to figure out a way for your dog and that judge to get connected and say, wow, this one's ready to start right here. Don't follow what everybody else does. Make, show the judge something different. You can have a free stack where this dog is stacking perfectly that direction like everybody else, or you can have the dog into a three quarter stack where it's facing into the ring at an angle and you're off to the side. So you have to memorize that general appearance. You have to dissect the words in that general appearance. And then you have to come up with different ways to present your dog so the judge can see those in the general appearance. Now, how, much of your, how many of your competitions are gonna be doing this? Zero. They're just gonna walk into the ring. So what's, gonna, what's this going to do to your chances of winning? Yep, yeah. so you're gonna be breed right off the bat right there. When we come into the ring, what are we thinking about? Our general appearance of the breed standard. And you're thinking, what do I need to show the judge when I come into the ring? Two things, if you're doing that, then the judge automatically gets drawn to your dog. The second thing is, you have too much work to do and think about, to think about getting nervous. <laughs> okay, down and back. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. See guys, that was a perfect demonstration right there. You've really got to pay attention to what that judge wants. You've got to visualize in your head, how am I going to make this turn? 
how many of you overshot this target right here? So we got one honest person here. Okay, that's good. <laughs> if I want to hit that target coming back from here, you got to figure out where you're going to slow your dog down to get in front, to lean forward, walk backwards, and slowly guide this dog onto this target. Because you need to create that finish right there. So when you have to do a pattern, you want to run through it like you're actually running with your dog and pay attention to what you're doing. I'm coming down the center of this mat here and my dog's over there. How do I get my dog back to here? Palm this direction. So if I leave my palm like this while I'm gating, what's going to happen? It's going to keep going. So you got to shake your hand and then slowly keep guiding this dog. Now, if you guys practice this at home, in a park, all over the place, then your dog's going to get used to this. And when you go to the ring, all this is going to be second, second nature. Guys, you need to start looking for focus points. So you, the judge says they want a triangle. You got to find a focus point over there. Before you leave this area, you know your judge is here, right? You need a focus point and see what's directly down the center of that mat to where that focus point is. That's where your hand needs to go over there so you can bring it straight back to the judge over here. Here's your judge right here, right? Mm -hmm. So if you were standing right here mm -hmm. and you looked over there, what's right in the center of the mat? So when you go over to that point and you see that green cone and your hands lined up with that, mm -hmm. and you know if you back up, what's going to be right here? You. Exactly. So if you're gating her in, so go ahead and gate. Okay, then you're going to shake, you're going to turn, look for your next target. Look for your next target. Okay, look for your next target. Good, put her on the table. Look for your next target. Isn't that cool? That is <laughs> Take your hand. Good. Pick up your target again. Good. Pick up the target. That's okay. Beautiful. All right. Take her around to the finale. Keep your eyes on the targets. Do position two. Look for targets. You drop your hand, your eyes down. Good. Very nice. Okay. What speed is the correct speed for the down and back for your breed? What speed is the correct speed for a go around? Let's think about that. A dog that's converging too much on that center, then that means your stride is too wide. So you have to shorten that up a little bit right there. If you have a dog that is converging and leaving a gap, your stride is too small. And that means you gotta lengthen your stride a little bit. That's why I said it's really good if you put the dog on a treadmill 
so you can get it so it's perfect to create that muscle memory. Communication is the key. If you guys are, are focusing on gating, but you're not putting any emphasis on the palm direction, then your dog is not gonna pay attention to that hand. Good boy. Good boy. Sit. Stand. Back. And if you don't have that hand as a tool, you might as well not spend any money for your entry fee. Turn the other way. There you go. Back. And stop slowing down. You're causing that dog to slow down. There you go. Good. 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 Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Good energy. Good energy. Good. 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 Look at how beautiful that looks. Not you. It looks. <laughs> and stand. Too much eye contact. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Very nice, nice turn. So what you have to learn is that you just flip a switch no matter what's going on, you laugh it off, you have a good time. If something doesn't go your way, who cares? You act like you meant for that to happen and then you recover at that point and continue on. But if you're, you're focusing too hard on trying to make something perfect, it's not gonna happen, it's gonna go backwards. Because the more you start thinking about that exercise, the more your dog is just gonna take over and sniff the ground and do all kinds of fun stuff. The exercise with those mats is a very valuable exercise because you're slowly bringing them, straightening them out, and then giving them and you a break mentally by tossing a treat. Bring them back, do it over. That's your recovery right there. That's how to take a situation in the ring that's just going disastrous and recover from it. You've got something that happens in the ring, throw a little treat, bring them back over, boom. That's your reset button. And you can start over from that point right there.
So I want you guys to practice this stuff with your left hand, with the leash in your hand, with your right hand, with the leash in your right hand. That means you have to go backwards in the ring when you do that. And then I want you to practice off lead, left hand, off lead, right hand. And imagine if you're connected to your dog so well that you can do either hand, off lead or on lead. How well will you be connected for that ring? You've got to have that treat right in that dog's nose. That's your first step for that connection right there. Then when you shake that hand, they know there's gonna be a treat there. In the beginning, you might give them that treat when they respond to that. You've gotta be creative to get them connected to this hand. Then step two, you stand up. You ignore the dog. After you ignore the dog, then you're gonna have this treat in this hand and you're gonna guide this dog all over the place because it's gonna be connected to the hand. Is we're gonna teach our dogs to come back to baiting judges. The way this is gonna work is let's say, let me borrow you for a second. So you're gonna go ahead and hand me the treat that your dog likes and tell me your dog's name. Joseph. Joseph. Okay, so she's gonna take Joseph down and back. So go ahead and pretend like you're taking Joseph down and back. The person playing the judge is gonna walk out a little bit. Joseph, Joseph. Joseph, she's going to let Joseph come out to the end of the lead and the judge is going to tell the Joseph to stop. And Joseph's going to stand there looking at the, who's ever playing the judge and then you're going to reward them with a treat. Very nice. Good job. Today is 100% for you guys, not for your dogs, because they're not ready for confirmation training yet. And this is where most people mess up. Most people get a show dog and they say, okay, let's start confirmation training and get this dog ready to go out there and compete. But if you're not connected to that dog, it's, you're gonna be really fight, you're really gonna be fighting hard to get that dog to do what you want. How many of you tried to have that dog go out to the baiting judge today and the dog turned around and looked at you? If that dog turns around and looks at you, you're focusing on that dog too much. Too much eye contact. You're becoming that dog's complete world. So what you've got to do is you've got to ignore that dog and just do the communication. If you just do the communication, the dog knows what you want. You don't have to focus and get into their world. Then when somebody else is going to give it the time of day and give it that eye contact that it so desperately wants, what's gonna happen? They're gonna pay attention. They're gonna say, oh, there, those are eyes. I can manipulate you. In some cases, in the beginning, it makes it seem like, oh my gosh, but you know, I love my dog. You can love your dog, but you got to remember the difference between animal behavior and human behavior. You, if you want this dog to do these things for you, you got to speak a language that they understand. When I go, ah, as opposed to no, the reason why I use that is because they already know what that means. Yes, I would love Louie. Yes. Ah, 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 ah. Tangle yourself up. Very nice. Ah! Ah! If you got a puppy chewing on the tail of an older dog, what's that older dog gonna do? Arr. They know that whatever you're doing, stop it, because that's unacceptable. What's the best time to train dogs? When they're hungry. When they're hungry, feeding time. And oh. I'm gonna show them when we bring this pan out. Come on, guys. They can follow the pack leader around. All right, want some food? Here you go, guys. Get in there. That's nice. Hey, look at them little guys. Go have that food. Oh, yeah. Hey, good job. That's good. Mmm. Oh, yeah. 
that won't make them so that they're trying to you know tear somebody apart when they get the food but you're building some food drive and you're building something where they're going to pay them with the food when you're training them so you're building up the incentive so i always start off where i'll stand over the bowl of food this is my food right here i make them wait for it and then after a short period of time all right and see what i'm doing the same stuff that I'm using out there. All right, and let them have the food. I'm gonna practice coming back to a non-baiting judge. So this judge is not used to seeing expression. They're used to watching the people that come back, spin around and do the ridiculous thing with the bait like this. So they don't care about expression. But what happens if they see 50 of those and all of a sudden, your dog walks up and says, here I am. What's that going to do? So I'm gating my dog to my judge. As I'm gating my dog back to my judge, I'm going to slow my dog down, get in front, lean forward, walk backwards, stay. And I stand back here, and now that judge sees a perfect expression. With How far... Do you want your dog away from the judge? The height of the judge. If that dog is as far away as this judge is tall, they get a good look at this dog. Because most people bring the dogs right here. And now I'm looking at the top of the dog. So my suggestion is for you to get a camera with a stand and do down and backs and practice coming back to a non-baiting judge. You got to figure out where you got to slow your dog down according to your dog's speed. So you can go lean forward, walk backwards, and stand. Now notice how I did that. I lean forward, walk backwards, see how my palms are pointing towards me? I'm telling my dog to come to me. I'm walking backwards and stand. So here's my lead hand. This is a stop sign. So where do I have the treat? in my lead hand. So I'm saying, here's the treat, you can't have it. You can control how your dog steps with its front. And as long as you keep your shoulders square, their foot placement's gonna be perfect. You can actually make your dog stack perfectly if you know what you're doing. Is it gonna be perfect in the beginning? No, <laughs> it's gonna take practice. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on gating. And I need group one to come up with their leashes and collars. And you're gonna enter the ring just like you did with your dogs. Go to your spots. Okay, first dog please. And have your, have your collar so it's dangling above the ground. So come back. Yep, so you're gonna wind up your leash so the chain is just above the ground with your, your hand low. Good. Now you want to make it so the chain doesn't bounce. Good. Okay. Your dog's getting taller. <laughs> Do you think that's a little different than what's going to happen when you put the dog in your hand? Yep. But wait, there's more. <laughs> what we're going to do next is you're going to come over to me with your cup. I'm going to fill your cup up. And you're gonna go down and back. You're gonna bring it back to me. When you bring it back to me, place this right here on this table. Nice smooth gate, just like that chain. Yeah. <laughs> you pick the breed. Your belly, I, I know you don't know anything about bodies, but your belly button's getting tall. <laughs> Watch your belly button. There it goes. A little hop over the, hop over the turtle. Yay. Okay, put that right there. Is there any water in there? There's lots of water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's pretty much the Lagota there. Yay. Good. Okay, you get a free cup of water. <laughs> we'll think of something good. Gating like you should in the ring. You're gonna get an opportunity to see what it looks like here. 
and then you can make some adjustments for the next time we go around. Wow, that was smooth. <laughs> Presentation day. Have you ever seen a performance, whether it was um, somebody playing an instrument, somebody singing, somebody painting, somebody dancing, skating, where you were just drawn into that before, okay? You have to be that performance. You have to be the snake charmer. You have to be the guide that's on that trip that you're hanging on every single word. That is the part where you have to either get a camera or get in front of a mirror and you literally have to rehearse your presentation. And no matter what happens when you're presenting your dog, own it. And what I mean by that is if your dog won't set a foot right or something, it's like, you silly. You know, just go with it, play with it, no big deal because people will be more forgiving with that. One of, the, one of the biggest things for me is somebody who's taken the time to condition their dog and learn about their breed. Okay, tell me about this dog. Well, her expression is supposed to be alert and thoughtful and intelligent. That's because she's supposed to be a sentinel and she has to be able to distinguish between enemies and friends. Okay, all right, okay. I love that. Okay, the head straight. And then tell me about your dog. The German short hair pointer has a short back, covering lots of ground, sloping croup, tail coming straight, a little bit raised one moment. <laughs> <laughs> but I do want to say how proud I am of you guys because, you know, here it is on the last day. I saw you guys showing these dogs beautifully. You were making things happen. You're starting to dig into the standard right here. And while you guys were talking about the standard, I was able to see these beautiful parts of these dogs. One of the things I liked about what Leanne was doing over there, she was square up with her dog and it foot placement is dead on. With the skip, you keep going to the side. And so it twists the feet right there. Okay, so you're doing good with the Leonberger, but you're working <laughs> too hard. You're working too hard. You're you're making it seem like it's too much work. I want you to just relax a little bit and, and get him to want to work for you. All right, today's best in show winner is going to be the Toy Fox Terrier. Yeah. yeah. You I, I want to really thank you guys. I know you've traveled some great distance to get here. I know you've spent a lot of money to get here. And I really, really appreciate that this was my group for the first master class here because you guys were an absolute blast. It was, it, you know, the it's like a family when we get together like this. And, and when you guys are out there doing your wins and stuff, I've got that crystal ball and I see some amazing wins in every single one of you. And I've, I've seen some advancements, like it's just unbelievable. My name is Lynn Bruch and I have a Lassa Apso named Dances with Fire. I am very new to the dog show stuff and I needed to find out what to do with this girl because she was spoiled <laughs> and I needed to get it under control. And so I looked him up on the internet and I found out all about these master classes and eight, seven day classes and said, this is something I need. <laughs> this is something I need. The first day she, I learned stuff that 
had been so contrary to everything that I had been taught about teaching a dog obedience, like look me in the eye and stuff. And I thought, oh my goodness, <laughs> I have to start from Jump Street. So that first day, I spent a lot of time still in those habits and I couldn't stop looking at her. <laughs> that was tough. The head straight, it was actually working for me that first day and that made me really, really happy. The second day was not as good. <laughs> I got frustrated and one of the things he had said was, you know, if you get frustrated, she's going to see that as weakness. And that was an eye opener for me because I thought I had things pretty well in hand with her obedience. Yeah. The third day, I was so shocked at how well she was doing, how well she was following my hand signals. And I was just really, really pleased. I'm really looking forward to this. I'm also looking forward to the six month mentorship afterwards because I know I'm going to stumble because I stumbled here a lot. Take it earlier. Take it, take it. I spoiled this dog and I got her right around three months and she already had some good basics down. But if I had done it even before I had the puppy, I would have done it earlier. I see all the bad habits that I had gotten myself into and I, I knew that I was doing something wrong. I just had no idea. If I could, I would have done it earlier. Mm -hmm. I'll do it again too. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Veronica Scribano and my breed is the Leon Burger. Um, I was hoping to fix a problem I have with Finn that I have now learned that I cause and that is him getting really silly in the ring and nipping at my arm and prancing like a little pony. Well, I have learned how to fix the problem. Uh -huh. um, I did get through it um, in one of the exercises in the field this week. So I was very, very happy to do that. I think if you're going to be successful at it, you have to really put yourself out there and work to a different standard and, and keep pushing yourself. When I found out how to get Finn, how to get myself from spiraling down into that trough of <laughs> desperation. <laughs> um, and that was simply to pick his head up head straight and yell at him, ah! and then be kind and put it past you. Uh, one of the aha moments I had was reading the last line of the general appearance of their breed standard, and that was that they are um, attentive and vigilant. So he was attending to me, the mom, what's the matter with you? And the more he did that, the matter I got. So it was just stupid. <laughs> so now I have to brush it off if there's a bitch in heat or if there's something interesting on the ground. I just have to do a simple head straight ah, and keep a level attitude. And that's, that's difficult for us Italians, but, <laughs> but we're working on it. Eric's techniques are absolutely amazing. I've met a lot of people that are his students and we, we worship him. <laughs> I think his techniques are wonderful and they've really worked for me, especially in the last six months I've had some success with Finn. And I attribute that to, to these workshops and to working hard at it and not just taking the workshops, but the online mentoring too. Um, my name is Darcy Callis. This is Splash and she is a Logoto Romagnolo. Um, I was at one other workshop and I was just so impressed with Eric's approach and I was really looking forward to just getting my head into being more competitive and understanding what that takes. And there's a lot to it. There's a lot of homework to do. So I, I got a better understanding of why people win and why people don't win. And understanding my breed and the purpose of the breed and being able to present my dog so that it conforms to the breed standard and knowing why it breed, it, it, uh, those standards are in place and why it's important that my breed uh, exemplify that. Oh, we laughed all the time. Um, stories, the people, um, just laughing at our mistakes and, you know, because mistakes happen and we're not perfect. Um, and just being able to laugh it off and just move on. Julia Sadler, Skipper Keys. Very excited. It's my second clinic with Eric, so I was really looking forward to building on what I learned in the first clinic. One of the main things that I needed help with, which is his expression and my not reacting when things aren't right, um, has greatly improved over the weekend and I actually was able to recover by the end.
um, and had a dog that was focused on me and not the issue that my dog was trying to focus on. No matter what, I just really, really have to not let things get to me. And this clinic was very much people who want to learn and do, so I feel like I got a lot more insights um, because we had such willing participants, how much I could glean even more so from, from the others and realize, and I met somebody that has a lot of the exact same issues that, that I do um, and has a top dog, so it made me um, feel a lot better about my um, journey and it encouraged me. But the, the big thing was the, the camaraderie and everybody helping everybody constructively and laughing, and nobody felt laughed at. It was all laughed with. Uh, my name is Diane, and my breed is the German Short Hair Pointer. The first day was a little, it was overwhelming, I guess. Uh, so many new things compared to what we've already been taught um, and what we already thought we knew. Like, she's enjoying it, I'm enjoying it. It's not as frustrating as I thought it might be because she's so smart, um, and she likes it, so. You know, there's obviously value in it, and it's obviously working if, if the dogs are liking it. You know, there's, there's something to it. Just watching all of us together, you know, all of the attendants, it's funny and comforting and humanizing to see people with top-rated dogs um, having the same problems that those of us that just walked in here are having. You know, dogs are going to be dogs, and there's nothing you can do about it. I would just like to say how much I'm enjoying it, how much I'm looking forward to doing it again, and how much I'm looking forward to taking home what we learned and practicing at home and then implementing it, you know, in practice and in the ring, because I want to see that difference, yeah. Um, my name is Karen Schramm and my breed is Brittany. I have um, a difficult girl who I was hoping to, to get more of a handle on, to, to get more of a bond with, figure out how she works, what makes her tick. Well, I, I guess it all started with the videos. When someone recommended um, Eric's workshops, I started watching his videos on YouTube and started implementing some of the changes, doing the target work and watch your hand. And, and um, we went from being select at shows to winning the breed. I, I really like the, 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 the fast action photography so that we could look frame by frame to see what was happening and, and how what we did affected the dogs. I mean, I could, I could look at her and I could tell, I glanced at her and she saw it. Um, so it, it's, it's been really interesting to actually not just be told if you do this, this is gonna happen, but to actually see it. She did everything that I asked her to off lead. She followed my hand, she weaved through the cones, she hit targets, she did everything. And it just showed me that if I respect her, she'll do anything. Do it sooner, do it when she was six months old, not four and a half. He can tell you what you're doing wrong without, without embarrassing you or hurting your feelings. Um, and and, and that, that's unique and priceless. Just if anybody is, is considering it, it's, it's, it's a great experience, it's worth the money, and, 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 and you should do it. Dama De Stefano, Miniature Bull Terriers. I'm getting my puppy um, probably near Christmas, so what I wanted to was be prepared. Um, I didn't want to have to go backwards, so I came to the class with trying to learn as much as I can for the puppy when I get the puppy, and it's been an incredible incredible experience. You know, I learned so many things years and years ago that were, um, you know, eye contact, look at me, and lead correction. And by the end of day one, I was like, wow, I've been doing this wrong for so many years. It's like, you know, that's, that's not the way you should do it. You should be building respect. Day two was a lot about my coordination and my, you know, figuring out how to to work with a dog and how to learn my body language. So um, day two was like a revelation. <laughs> I mean, it was like when I finally got the dog to move with my hand, it was like, oh my, that's, 
how it works. <laughs> and it was amazing. Day three, um, just learning about gates, because that was something I was very interested in when I came in. Like, how, how do you gate a dog? And if a dog's gate is off, how do, you, how do you learn to slow your gate down? Or how do you learn to make the dog look better? And it was amazing the techniques that I learned on that day. You know, it's like all these questions coming in. It's like, oh, that's how it's done. I, I just can't wait. I can't wait to get the puppy and come back and say, oh, look at what, look at this. And really been amazing. I've loved animals all my life. And this has really been an eye-opening experience on how to handle dogs and, and their behavior. I actually got the hand movement down and the dog followed my hand. It was like, oh, now that's how you do it. Oh my gosh. And the dog did it exactly how. And, and to take my eyes off of the dog and, and go around that aha moment when I felt like, oh, I feel really good right now. You know, this feels good. This is a this is a nice spot and the dog looked really good. And I was like, oh, this is what it is. <laughs> this is what I've been wanting for years. <laughs> um, I really wish that I would have started sooner and seen the video sooner and been here sooner. I mean, yeah, I wish I wish I would have started sooner. Oh, Eric, he's hysterical. <laughs> He's, he's, he's just great to watch and listen to, and he makes me laugh all the time. And the people, I mean, we're, everybody's so engaging. I think that's, you know, everybody's, it's, it's serious, but not serious. You know, it's, it's fun, and it's a great, a great team of people who just love to do what they're doing. Thank you for the experience. It's been amazing. And thank you for all the people that are here, because I don't have a dog, so they've been really helpful to me and really like knowledgeable and 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 the people who have gone to um, his clinics will you know definitely surround you and help you and 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 will and that's been amazing that's that's really a family i, I really like that <laughs>